Hello and good afternoon from Sydney Area of the Angels Church. And today, this morning, I was praying and I felt the presence of God the Father all around and I felt his peace and hope descend on me. And today's prayer meeting is the essence of hope and peace the era of peace to come, looking forward in God's time, in God's moment, in his ways, in his essence. God is a God of patience. God is a God of living in the moment. He exists outside of time, but he's taught me and he wants to help us live in the moment, day by day, in a spirit of prayer and surrender and I just feel really hopeful today I feel really empowered by God to speak of peace because the world is so without peace today it's lost in hopelessness depression oppression all these things and we can lose sight of God the world is lost the world has lost sight of God. So God wants us to turn to him and his grace, his power, his omnipotent grace. And I'm going to sing a song called Amazing Grace, but it's not the original, but I'm going to sing some oldies and I'm going to sing some newbies to give it a mix because we've got a mixed audience. So let's see what the Spirit does today, this morning. So we praise you, Jesus. We give you thanks for this peace. We give you thanks for this moment. We give you thanks for this beautiful day. And we give you peace. We give you our joy. We give you this moment. We give you this. We give you this, Jesus. Yeah. 
Especially when we live out the sacraments, we go to confession, reconciliation, and it's reconciling with God. It's not, you're not beating yourself up and saying, mea culpa, mea culpa, it's my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault, I'm never going to be yours, God, I'm going to go to hell, I'm bad, I'm terrible. The devil tricks us sometimes and let, lets us have a pity party, but God wants us to be free, and going to confession is reconciling and admitting our weaknesses so God can fill us with strength and grace and blessings. That's basically what he wants us to do. Confession is amazing. I go every week because of my mission, my calling and my vocation. But it fills me with such sustenance and grace and blessings and light. And my burdens become lighter and it, you get washed in the precious blood. So it's so refreshing, replenishing. And then God is kind of hitting today on the new era that's to come. And I'm just going to find what he said to me earlier. And it's really, really, really powerful. So he said this morning in prayer, Now, my child, you are ready for me to talk with you regarding your ministry on these end of days, the end of this epoch. This will be the end of satanic rule and the forces dominating you on earth. 
Many are confused into thinking that in the era of peace, that sin will not exist. Satan will cease to tempt you and all other demons. Yet you will still be wounded and you will act through your brokenness. Yet sins will not have the same effect as the demons will not be able to tempt you or work through your wounds. Over time, you will be also living in the divine will, and you will understand the ways I work to heal your mind, body and spirit. You will surrender more comfortably to me for healing of inner wounds, and your inner wounds and in your inner wounds you will grow to know and understand. My little Seamus, you have been given a head start in this area through certain souls I put in your path. Then I have enforced these ideologies and insights into your being. I have chosen the little and most broken and grow them into warriors before you to show you how I work through souls and people to allow me to do great things in you, dear children. The era of peace is coming and the church will be set ablaze with your Holy Mother, your Queen's flame of love that is spreading from Medjugorje the end times apparition of your times. Priests will be plenty, there will be many healings and the sacraments will run like living waters through humanity. Life and the true religion will be fully accepted and implemented. My son will rule through his Eucharistic heartbeat that will be the centre of a more holy, simplistic, domestic church like it was with the Holy Family, with my son in the beginning. It will go back to being real, simple and very humble, very practical too. My children, look to the sunrise of the new dawn. I have given my little prophet a foretaste of it to prepare the way. New ways are approaching and the little remnant that remains will be set ablaze on fire in unity with my son and in community with the magisterium of the church. Wow. So basically, in a nutshell, God is giving us a prophecy. He is showing us the completion of the Our Father. So if you say the Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So you see, the, the, the words that stand out is, Thy kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. That is the completion of the Our Father. The Our Father is a prophecy, and it will be completed when the new era comes. We're actually living in the Bible, in Scripture. The book of Revelation is open before us, and we're going to enter a tribulation. We're going to enter a difficult period of the church, a trial of the church. But through that, God's trying to focus us on the hope of the new horizon, the new dawn, the era of peace that's promised. And I really came in Medjugorje to talk about that. And she promised peace in the end, her immaculate heart will triumph. And as I was praying today, in the vision that God gave me when I was praying and he was speaking to me, I saw lots of priests, hundreds, thousands of priests, hearing confession, doing mass, performing miracles through Jesus, miracles of healing. And over time, because Satan is sent to hell and, and vanished to hell and we're left with no demons on earth tempting us, working through our wounds, then a great transformation of healing. It, it doesn't mean that sin won't exist anymore because we're still, we'll still be broken, we'll still have our inner wounds, but God is showing us through time, through healing and through living through his divine will, his ways, man will come to a new communion a new formation, a new dimension, a new formality, a new community because 
everything will be renewed, the Holy Spirit will be able to be unblocked because the demons aren't around anymore. So then over time, what he's trying to say is sin will sort of die away because we, a lot of people will become fully healed through this era of peace. So sin will eventually die away, is what he's showing me. Over time, it won't happen overnight, but sin will be lessened for sure because our wounds will become more healed. The demons will be able to tempt us and we'll be able to see things the way God sees them because God has put people in my path, especially my friend Michael, who was my mentor at the beginning, still mentoring me now, but not as much, but he has been given insight, wisdom and intellect from God and, uh, and he has been trained in inner healing through people. God always uses people. So then when I came along, Michael taught me about inner healing, how God's ways work like a, math, a mathematical brain and it's very, like, there's no, there's always, a, there's only one answer through ma mathematics. So it's kind of like that formula with God. God God's very mathematic and very uh, strategic in his ways of working. And the formation of demons and inner wounds, we all have these inner wounds. We all have demons that work through our inner wounds. And say, for instance, I was bullied as a child. So I have a wound of being bullied and horribly treated and that stems from my childhood and I can get a trigger from a memory or looking at something on television or a certain situation like someone might look like someone who bullied me in the past and then those memories come up but I can I know now to go to God and allow that memory to come up and I'll go and sit in front of the blessed sacrament or find a quiet space and allow God into that area of my heart and cry out that memory and then I go into my inner child, the, the, the child of the age that that happened, and I imagine me and Jesus hugging that, that child, that inner child of me, and I cry at that pain and that memory becomes healed. But it doesn't happen overnight, it's a gradual process. And, and Michael has taught me this, but also through Michael teaching me this, God has enforced it in me more. And now I'm reaching out to teach you about inner healing. And this is what's going to happen in the era of, of the new era of peace, because the demons won't be able to penetrate and work through our wounds and trigger us as much with a beautiful onion underneath and one day we will be pure and holy and white with no skin just complete holiness and that's what the onion stands for and that's the analogy God has given me to give it's a beautiful onion underneath all that and it looks so bright and white and shiny and clean and new and that's holiness and God is calling us to holiness but I believe we'll reach that Maybe, I don't know, I could be jumping the gun here. But I do feel that through time and through the era of peace, I don't know how long the era of peace will be, but if it does extend a long period of time, sin could, over, over time, be lessened at the most, or even it could, I don't know, could be completely eradicated. Because our lady keeps reminding me, when I talk to her about this era, she keeps showing me, like people living in the divine will like Adam and Eve were before they fell. So maybe we could go to that stage of n completely, no, completely no sin over time. Who knows? We don't know. And I'm just giving you what I've seen and what I've experienced with God. But at least we won't have the demons blocking us and tempting us and ferociously attacking us. So that'll be interesting, not having the demons attacking us and tempting us. So who knows? The world's our oyster in that era. So like, why not live like that now? We've got a chance, you know. We've got a chance to heal more, to know more. And I'm blessed to be able to share with you this good news, this hope. And it makes me excited and it's not all doom and gloom and I think we're at a good starting point where we can actually why not start now our lady's been coming to Med coming and appearing in Medjugorje for over 42 years now and she's saying the same thing convert give me your hearts turn to my son come to my son so we have an opportunity to become better and God is calling us out of mediocrity 
He wants more. He wants us to convert. He wants us to be vessels of light, peace and joy. And let me tell you, I try my best every day to follow God, to know God, and I suffer, I cry, I go through those inner moments of pain and memories and flashbacks, etc. But the more I give over and the more I go through my pain and the more I give it to Jesus, the more love I have be given and the more I transform inside and reflect outside and I can't help but go and hug, go and love, go and proclaim the gospel, go and tell everyone Jesus loves them, talk about Jesus unabashedly, unashamedly. And that is the beauty of the gospel. That is how apostles lived back in the day. We have so much been given to us, bestowed on us. We're blessed to be Christian, those of us who are Christian. We're blessed to be Catholic, those of us who are Catholic. But we have a responsibility. It, doesn't, it, it comes with responsibility and power. So whenever we die, we're going to be asked, did you love much? Did you do good deeds? And your arms should be full. We have been given much. So much is expected. So let's be Christians. Let's show our Father that we can do this. Let's show God that we can go out with flames of love in our hearts and bring the new era now. We can do it now. Why wait till the end of the tribulation? Why not give God something now to start with? Why not start and give over your memories, give over your pain, give over your unforgiveness, your bitterness, and he can transform that into love, light, and joy, and peace. Praise be Jesus. I hope that I explained um, what God wanted me to explain. I feel him very much over me and smiling right now. So, <laughs> praise you God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And the speaker is... I forgot to charge it, so do you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sing uh, a song to, to get us out and to make us go on the way. So let me see what we can sing. But you know, and there's the bell. So let's see where we can go now. I've got a song in mind, so let's see if I can get it. If I can get it, Jesus. But you see, God wants us to be in the moment, in his, in his will, in his presence. And when you're in God's presence, nothing can deter or disturb. Honestly, it's absolutely beautiful. You know? Yes, here it is. Can't believe I found it. Praise you, God. And this is for all you people who always like to hear an old day or a familiar song. So I'm gonna do this.